ever come to offer my sincere condolences. <laughs> Bond often finds himself in all sorts of scrapes that demand some cunning ruse or clever technology to complete his mission. To this end, he will often arrange a meeting with Major Boothroyd to be assigned the equipment he needs to win the day. This is my favourite part of any Bond movie, as all manner of bizarre device will showcase, typically in the background of the scene. My younger self often imagined himself not as Q, but as one of those anonymous lab geeks testing something outlandish in the background. The trajectory of my life has resulted in precisely this. I also studied an array of martial arts, so I guess I overshot that goal entirely. But look closer. What does Bond need from his equipment? What contradictions are actually resolved by the technology with which Bond will travel? Well, I've trawled through all of it, so you don't have to. And the vast majority of Bond's kit offers only the following functions. Kill or incapacitate, communicate, record, locate, or just simply offer a means to get from A to B. But that's not the interesting part. An ordinary black leather case, flat throwing knife. You got it? Yes, I think so. What additional function does Q offer? What contradictions are presented by weapons, trackers, radios and vehicles that Bond must employ? Well, in a large majority of cases, Q must either make this equipment portable or conceal it in some way. There are obviously a number of exceptions, but in the main, that's it. That's Q's job. Kill things, find things, communicate with things, or carry things around. Make it small or hide it somehow. Job done. A survival rifle that's discreet and portable. Tear gas, hidden in a parking meter. A miniature rocket, concealed in a cigarette. An explosive bullet hidden in a pen. Gas, hidden in a briefcase. A gun and a flamethrower, hidden in bagpipes. A submarine, hidden in a car. A helicopter, that fits in your luggage. Machine guns and rockets, hidden in another car. A transmitter, hidden in a shoe. An ejector seat, where you wouldn't expect it. Another ejector seat, for the office this time. Scuba gear, that you can keep in your pocket. A homing beacon, that you swallow. A gun, hidden up your sleeve. Decapitation, hidden in a brolly. A door, for unwelcome visitors. A fountain pen, for cutting rhetoric. A rocket launcher, and a thank you for the music. A car, just hidden. Gas, hidden in a keyring. A sofa, or a telephone box that hides a trap. Explosive in an alarm clock, guaranteed never to awaken anyone. Explosives hidden in toothpaste. A gun, hidden in a camera. A laser, also hidden in a camera. A rocket launcher, hidden in a leg cast. An explosive, hidden in a pen. A jetpack that goes in the trunk. A machine gun that's only sleeping. A decoy for a swimmer. Tires that slash. A trap in a pocket climbing equipment in a suit, a radio in a lighter, a fax in a watch, a gun in a ski pole, a guillotine in a tea tray, tiny cameras, a poison pen to ironically kill a snake, a punch from a broken arm, a jet hidden in a horse, a crocodile to hide in, a gun in yet another pen, a laser in a hub, a radio in a broom, a watch for climbing, a laser in a watch and a tiny, tiny radio. But what the fuck? Is that? Good. Have that ready for army day. Yes, sir. A bowler is a type of throwing weapon made from weights on the end of interconnected cords, used to capture animals by entangling their legs. The thrower grasps the bowler by one of the weights or by the cords. The thrower gives the balls momentum by swinging them before release towards the target. The weapon is usually used to entangle an animal's legs, but when thrown with enough force might even inflict damage. Now I guess the bowler is designed to entangle, to capture. That's its function. But perhaps in the right hands, those weighted balls might exhibit quite a bit of speed as they wrap around the target. The string entangles the target and draws both the cord and the mass to bear. This mechanism offers a wide grasp that gains precision as it wraps around the target. But Q has strung two fucking hand grenades to the end. Why the bloody hell has he done that? Two fucking hand grenades. What possible purpose does this serve? Precision with hand grenades. Precision at short range, 
with hand grenades. If he wishes to capture his target, those bloody hand grenades are not going to help in the subsequent interrogation. If he wants to blow the target's bloody head off, there are surely more suitable methods available to achieve this. I have absolutely no idea what Q was thinking when he attached two hand grenades to the end of a rope. Good. Have that ready for army. Bond, leave this one in the lab. Shocking. Positively shocking. <laughs>